Hey, this is Lance with Brando Consulting. Thanks for joining us again. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating locations. So to create a location, we need to first go to the location screen. Go to Setup, Locations, and you'll see in the location screen, it has this handy Auto Create setting. When you're first setting up Fishbowl, this may be a good way to start, is to, to use this Auto Create. So we'll click Auto Create and select the warehouse that you want to create locations for. In a previous video, we created a Texas warehouse, so now it's a good time to add locations to it. So I'll click Next. And in this Auto Create, it wants to know what our warehouse looks like. Now many of my clients have a pallet rack area or a stock shelving area and then a more pick friendly area down on the floor with smaller shelves that, that you can walk around with. And so go, going by that typical medium size type warehouse, I'm going to first set up uh, pallet racks and we'll say we have three or four, let's say we have four aisles of pallet racks and um, each aisle has about five sections and what that means is um, we've got one tower or one, one uh, partition, whatever you want to, to call them and then if we want we can put how many shelves. We can say which shelf it's on. Sometimes that can be helpful because you know you'll need to know if you need a pallet jack or a forklift to get it down. And so generally you may have about three shelves. Now, I don't know if you want to get as specific as the exact position it's in. Usually the shelf is good enough and if your labels are big enough you can see okay that's the location or that's the part number that I'm supposed to go get so it's up to you you decide whether each shelf has two positions or not usually those those pallet racks have um, you know two positions on each shelf a pallet here and a pallet there so um, I'll I'll go, I'll go ahead and leave that just to show you what it will do. Um, one nice thing about this is when we click finish, it's easy to delete what we created. Okay. So then in this area right here, we decide what to name the locations. So do we want our aisles to be an alpha character or do we want it to be a numeric character? And that's, that's what this is saying right here. So if we want our aisles to be numbers, then put it like that. If we want the, the rack to be a letter, we'll, we'll start that with an alpha character. And then if we want the shelf on the rack to be a number, you get the idea. Uh, so it, it all starts at the aisle. What are you calling your aisle? Is it an alpha character or a, or a um, numeric character? And then the delimiter, if you want a delimiter in between each one, like a period or something, um, you can separate each one so you know that it's a, it's a different section. And that's helpful if you use alpha characters all the way through or numeric characters all the way through. The only delimiter you cannot use is a dash because that's what Fishbowl uses to separate the location group and the location. So we'll click Next, Finish, and it should show us our locations here now that we auto created that in Texas. Come on, show us our Texas locations. Oh, there they are. Not sure why it wasn't showing up, but there you see it's delimited by the period and it named the aisle, the section, the shelf. Now let's do our picking area. So we'll go to auto create and let's say in our picking area we have 
three aisles and each aisle has about 10 sections. Now depending on how large your parts are, you may want to be specific or general. If you have small parts, then let's, let's say we want the shelf, but usually in the picking area, because you're right there in front of it, you don't need to get too specific and say what position it's in. Sometimes that uh, makes makes uh, makes the um, uh, flexibility it, ma it makes the program inflexible and not as scalable uh, to get too specific with your locations so usually I would say don't even have a shelf location just get yourself in front of it and that's good enough but like I say only you can decide what's going to work best but Generally, this is what I see. Too specific causes problems. Okay, and the same thing. Let's say we'll start with numeric and go alpha next. Click next, finish. And now we have our picking type locations in section 1B, etc. So stock type locations, and this is the last step we'll make in a, in a stocking area. We don't want it to be pickable, right? We don't want Fishbowl to send us to the top shelf that we need a forklift to unwrap a pallet and dig out of a box and make it uh, to, to finally pick something. So that's not what we want. Um, so our, our stock areas that are non-pickable areas, we want to make them not pickable. And in another video, I'll show you how to export your locations, change all of the pick flags to false, and import them back in. So make your stock areas non-pickable, make your staging areas pickable. So your pick tickets will send you to an easy access area. All right, thanks for joining us here at Brando Consulting to review the creation of locations and the best way to set locations up. If you have any more questions, need any more advice on the best way to set up locations for your warehouse, feel free to give us a call. We'd, we'd love to help.